the people. They are mad. They are frustrated. They are deceived. When they're off, running through my mind is the complaints and demands of every Def Jam poet, every aspiring conscious black poet, minus the seducers with their love poems and the ones who just curse just to get a laugh. No, the ones who use poetry as a pulpit, whose poems are titled, I'm tired of, or I'm sick of, or you remember when? Yeah, the positive ones who come out to open mics, lounges, and cafes to spread their truth, to inform and warn the masses, to preach their gospel and hundreds listen thousands listen millions listen oh how have they missed what was right before the rise check it it's like imagine you're in a desert thirsty it's getting hotter and you're losing water and they are there with no water creativity be saying how bad the situation is like my people are thirsty oh my people are thirsty my people are thirsty big hopes but all talk like richard pryor and the whiz yo check it these poets talk about the evil in their hood, blaming the white man and the corrupt government. It's like trying to win World War II with just passionate speeches, but morale is useless and the hour is hopeless. When you have no weapons, but you're still storming the beaches, when it's sin sucking the life out the troops like leeches. We're too worried about Freemasons, New World Order, secret societies, the Illuminati. Let's look at the murder, the poverty, and diseases. So much funding that I can't even begin. Every last problem in society can be traced back to someone's sin. Poverty on one end means greed on the other. Avatar made over 100 million in a weekend. Couldn't that help single mothers? If you cut Planned Parenthood, Stem cell research and evolution, we can fund our felon school system. Who would have thought that our taxes would fund sin? Cause telling kids they monkeys ain't working. So when they go bananas for destruction, don't be surprised. Because abortion says there's no purpose for their life. Even worse, they shouldn't exist. Because to their mama, they just an inconvenience. Yo. Just because someone can't control their endorphins does not mean innocent kids should become orphans. Endorphins are hormones if you ain't no scientist. If you need a reminder, remember those late night to early morning phone combos? For less raging than you driving? If no car, you walking. At they door, you knocking. Later slow jam, you bumping. Next you touch it, then you rubbing, and then it happens. Newton said every action has a reaction. So your sinful actions led to a child reaction. Sadly, we break the laws of physics because energy is never transferred nor destroyed. But in this equation, a child we can avoid. But a Def Jam poet will never tell you to be abstinent. Practice what you preach or preach what you practice. It must be the latter because exposing sin will never happen. We focus so much on the subliminal when it's the clearly visual that's hurting us. And I know they can get a kid off the streets, tell them about college, get them off drugs, beautiful. But is that the end all be all? When all inconsistent human will is the only thing from stop us from going back to a free fall? Man, these poets scream, let the change start and end with us. Have you ever thought how come we never have Prideful Anonymous or Liars Anonymous? Like, hi, I'm Bob. Hi, Bob. I think too highly of myself. These poets just want more bibliographies than Bibles on the shelf. Turn to First Gandhi or, or turn to Second Obama or songs of insert your name here. They want to redeem our people through these means? What can black pride and positivity do for a depressed teen? Prostituting the kind of self-like scene who never knows what peace means because the Lord they have never seen. Yo, these poets are passionate, but these poets are coming from the heart, but these poets are crying out, just be careful what you snap your fingers to. So, how am I going to impact my society? I'm not marching to Washington. I'm not protesting. I'm not going to a rally because we've tried that. So, I will never raise my fist to the skies because my Lord is there. I said I will never raise my fist to the skies because my Lord is there. Instead, I will unclench my fist, open my hands in worship because my Lord is there. And I, and I will never bring them down. Even when it begins to hurt, I will never bring them down. Even when people are laughing at me, I will never bring them down. When I don't even have to keep them up because it hurt and people were laughing, but he never came down. This unconditional worship is just a symbol of my life when I'm walking around. Because in Christ, the cure of social justice can only be found. Thank you.